enough with the crowd work comics. I'm sick of logging on and every day seeing the same stuff. Shorts, reels, TikToks. It's all crowd work that you're pumping out. And I know I don't want to burn material, but I got to get content out there. I get it. You want clicks. You want people to notice you. You want subscriptions. You want to make money at this. You want people to come to shows, but you're overdoing it. You're ruining live shows. I talked to a comic in LA and also one in New York City. Both of them said the exact same thing, that in a showcase at the main clubs, there'll be like eight or 10 comics going up, right? Each of them will have their own camera set up or their phone. They'll do an opening bit, a closing bit. Then they'll talk to the crowd the rest of the time, hoping to go viral. What are you doing? This is not a show. You're trying to get people from their computers and their phones to come and see you. Then they come and see you and they see this. This is what you represent yourself as. You're not supposed to do crowd work. It's considered easy. Why are you comics doing basically a parlor trick for audiences? Crowd work is super easy. And comics try to make it look like we're, we're so quick on our feet. But watch these, these crowd work clips. The comic repeat, what did you say again? Then they repeat it. Maybe they take a sip of their drink. That's all the time in the world you need. You're turning comedy into an episode of kids say the darndest things, but with drunk adults. The audience isn't there to hear about themselves. The audience is there to hear what you think about, what you've worked on, what you've put together. They're trying to escape their own lives. But now you're making everybody want to be a part of the show. Oh, I'm helping the comedian. You shouldn't need help. The audience is there to watch, to observe, to enjoy themselves, not carry you. Oh, I have to come up with something for the comedian because he doesn't write material anymore. You know who gets to do crowd work? The headliner. And it's reserved for if they want to have a kind of a loose set, if the crowd is tight and they need to kind of jar them to their senses, get them interested in the show, get them participating to some degree. The MC is not allowed to do crowd work. The feature act's not allowed to do crowd work. If you want to do that, you have to ask the headliner. The headliner usually say no. You know why? Because it gets the crowd talking. It gets the crowd thinking that they can talk to the comic, uh, having side table conversations. It's not good for a show because then everybody else becomes so distracted they can't follow along to a story that's more than two sentences long. So they just want set up punch, set up punch, because they don't know what the hell's being talked about anymore. Instead of doing your act, you're, you're interviewing the audience? Do that on LinkedIn. Of course, there's some exceptions, all right? There's some headliners that that's all they do. That's what they're known for. It's not my cup of tea, but it's okay. But everybody now, it's like a few years back when comics started doing those heckler videos. Comedian destroys teacher heckler. Comedian obliterates a single working mom who dared to say something. You're encouraging hecklers. How do you not see that? For what? A few clicks? A couple extra bucks? It ruins the whole show for every other comic going up. That's why you're not supposed to work too dirty if you're a feature act. You're not supposed to talk about controversial topics if you're an MC or a feature act. That's supposed to be safe for the headliner. Some of you may be thinking, yeah, but everybody else does it. Yeah, that's how hacks think. Do topical jokes that you're gonna burn anyways. Most comedians are remembered by their signature bits. For me, it was talking about my family being dead and dating a girl with a baby arm. What's your signature bit gonna be? Oh, that time that you asked somebody in the audience how long they've been married and they gave you a funny answer and the wife knew one anniversary the husband didn't know how long really is that why you got into this business so you could just sell out that quickly just for the record i'm not bashing matt rife or any comic in particular okay i wish matt rife the most success humanly possible everything i've heard from fellow comics is that he's the real deal and he's funny and he's got material but i'm using him because I'm trying to figure out how this guy blew up all of a sudden and in searching for his actual stand-up, it was just all, all crowd work. It took me a long time to find actual bits. 
Again, he's not the problem. The problem is he's blown up, and so now everybody else is doing it. And I know a lot of you don't know this, but there's some of you that do, and you know better. You got to leave something for the rest of the comics. Don't mess up live shows because you want more followers on TikTok. It's gross. Don't be lazy. Write material. Test that material out. Perform that material. Videotape that and send it out. Get viewers and fans the real way. For those of you thinking, oh, people, if people heard the joke already, they're not going to get... Burt Kreischer made a career off the machine story. They made a movie out of it. He could go up into any venue that he's doing, arenas, and still do that bit. People want to hear it. Make your stuff that good. See, even my dog's mad. You know better, so do better. You can't say you weren't warned. You're going to wind up going into a, a show where the crowd just thinks that they can talk to anybody. Why even have a microphone at that point? It took a long time to get people to understand they are not helping the comedian by talking. Don't undo all those years of work.